Fantasy is one of the most beloved genres in literature. There's really no other genre that can harness humanity's power of creativity other than fantasy, with its ability to allow us to suspend belief and enter otherworldly realms where anything can happen and anything is possible, all the while often managing to give us an inward look at ourselves or issues going on in the real world. Now while intricate magic systems and world building are some of the major appeals to fantasy, these can also be the exact same reasons why it's a difficult genre to break into. Detail-rich worlds with intricate histories and politics, numerous kingdoms, and strange magic can all be hard to track for someone who's new to the genre. Understandably, fantasy can be difficult to get into, but it is 100% worth it. This is my ultimate beginner's guide to fantasy. I'm gonna be giving a ton of recommendations on what I think are good places to start off while also highlighting some of the best of the genre. Now, even if you're a veteran fantasy reader, I'm sure you're gonna find some recommendations here to enjoy. And I want you guys to leave your recommendations in the comments for beginner fantasy books or series. Now, real quick, this video is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, which in English means lords or ladies. You see where I'm, you see where I'm getting at? You can be a laird. Their title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. And you get an official certificate like this one with a crest and everything. And this is not a fake certificate. You can officially change your title to Lord or Lady on your airplane ticket, your credit card, your dating profile. You even get a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. Now what's really awesome is you're also supporting the biodiversity of Scotland and worldwide reforestation efforts. They plant a tree with every order and they work with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future in order to help global reforestation. This is a great gift for friends and family and currently they have a Father's Day sale. Established Titles is running a big sale right now so if you use the discount code CAPTURED10 you get 10% off additionally to the sale. That's a lot of savings. Go to the link in the description, establishedtitles.com slash capture10 to get your gifts right now. And a big thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring another video. Now I'm gonna be starting with recommendations geared towards a younger audience. Then I'll move on to standalones and novellas, then trilogies, and then the larger series that get people hooked. Starting off with some easy to read introductions to the genre, some series that are geared towards a younger audience. Now obviously, Harry Potter was a worldwide phenomenon that launched a generational passion for the genre. It was a catalyst for many young readers to branch out from the world of Hogwarts to other fantasy and sci-fi series. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that only read Harry Potter, assumed it was the best the genre had to offer, and didn't really read anything else. Another nostalgic series is His Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman. If you love stories involving parallel universes, beautiful writing, and character development, then this series has all of that. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, of course, is a classic, and these books are still a lot of fun. These are charming, cozy reads that are wonderfully inventive, witty, and even kind of strange at times. They feel a little dated, but I still appreciate Lewis's writing and how he's good at creating evocative scenes with just a few simple words. The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. I feel like this is a good introduction to high fantasy. It is a little cookie cutter high fantasy. It's not the best series out there, especially book one is a little hit or miss, but I think it's a great series uh, for young readers. It really picks up, uh, once things get rolling, it kind of picks up in the last few books and gets a lot more interesting. It's got elves and dragons and a lot of familiar things that you see in high fantasy, including many of the familiar tropes that you know, uh, but if you're completely new, I think it's still a lot of fun and it's a good introduction. The Percy Jackson and the Olympians and all the other series that are set in that world, I think are also great introductions to fantasy and I think they still hold up really well even as an adult. Uh, we're currently reading them on my Discord server, you can join along if you want. If you want a really fun and humorous urban fantasy adventure that also teaches you about Greek mythology, then I would highly recommend. 
Okay, moving on to some standalones and novellas. These are perfect if you're not ready to commit to a big series yet. Neil Gaiman is a perfect place to start with fantasy. He writes a lot of standalones, and Stardust is one that I would recommend. It has a compelling quest. It has characters searching for fulfillment. It has a lot of surprises and humor, and it's kind of like a twisted version of a fairy tale. And it's very short. It follows a man who promises to bring back a fallen star to his beloved. And yeah, the fallen star is a person. The ending did fall a little flat, but overall, it was such a beautiful story. If you like fairy tales, then you should read Stardust. Neverwhere is another one I would recommend. It's kind of an urban, magical realism fantasy. It's got this whole underground London, this whole world beneath London with quirky characters, and I just found it really enjoyable. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. You may recognize this from the Studio Ghibli film, but you should read the book as well. It's about the infamous wizard Howl and a cursed hat maker named Sophie. She finds her way into Howell's mechanical moving castle in order to lift her curse. Howell is very eccentric. There's kind of a fairy tale vibe to this story. It's got this peaceful atmosphere. It's very lighthearted and easy to read, and I would highly recommend. Now for some Sanderson standalones. The Emperor's Soul is probably the best novella or piece of short fiction that I've read. This story is very engaging. It follows Shay, a forger who can use her magic to rewrite the history of objects and recreate them. But after a mission gone wrong, she's captured and is given the chance to save her life if she agrees to forging a new soul for the Emperor who was attacked by assassins. Forgery is a really well-designed magic system that's absolutely fascinating to learn about, and while this was technically set in the Elantris world, it is completely self-contained, and you could read it without spoiling the novel. And I highly recommend you do read it. Warbreaker, I feel like, is an excellent place to start with Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere, which is his fictional universe. And this is a standalone novel, as of right now. I believe there is planned to be a sequel, but you can completely read this on its own, um, which is why I think it's a good place to start with any fantasy reader. I got coffee on the cover, don't tell anyone. Now one of the biggest selling points of Warbreaker is the really interesting magic system called Awakening. Awakeners are able to use their biochromatic breath to awaken inanimate objects and give them commands. And while Awakeners can see color in a more vibrant hue, Awakening also comes at the cost of draining the color of nearby objects. There's some really great witty dialogue between Light Song and Blush Weaver. There's some amazing political intrigue. Uh, the magic system is incredibly interesting. Uh, the ending I felt like was probably one of Sanderson's weakest endings, uh, at least for me. But overall, I think Warbreaker is such a great place to start. I would highly recommend. On the other hand, you could also start uh, your introduction to the Cosmere with Elantris or Elantris. This was Sanderson's very first published novel, and it's not his strongest book, but that doesn't mean that it isn't great. It's an incredibly unique story. The city of Elantris was once beautiful and radiant, with incredible architecture and ruled over by demigods who were once normal people before touching a mysterious transforming power. They used their magical abilities for the benefit of all until ten years ago, when a curse fell upon the city. Elantrians became leper-like, powerless creatures, and the city dark and crumbling. One of the main characters is a prince who's proclaimed dead, yet actually has been stricken by the same curse that ruined Elantris and is exiled to live in the Dark City. This is almost Sanderson's twist to the whole zombie apocalypse genre, and I really enjoyed the atmosphere and the characters. This is a complete and satisfying slow burn story in one volume that I think is a good place to start. The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong. This is a Japanese-inspired fantasy. I haven't actually read it yet, but I have seen it be recommended for beginners quite often, so I wanted to recommend it in this video, just in case. And I do want to get to this one very soon. All I really know about it is that it follows the dual perspective of a mother and her teenage son, and the world of Kaigen is very traditional while outside it's more advanced, and I guess the government, there's a lot of pr propaganda going on and brainwashing. It's got some very emotional moments and heavy themes, and I've just heard a lot of great things about this. And yeah, I want to get to it soon. Maybe, maybe we can read it together on the Discord server 
If you haven't joined yet, you should. But if any of that sounds interesting to you, then this is a standalone you may want to read. Now, The Lord of the Rings reigns as one of the best fantasy series of all time, but if you're not ready to tackle the entire trilogy, which clocks in at over a thousand pages, then its prequel, The Hobbit, is a much easier place to be introduced to the world of Middle-earth, and is just the best way to start anyway. I'm actually not going to recommend The Lord of the Rings in this video because everybody knows of it, and as much as I love it, it may not be the best place for modern readers to start. Unless you are interested in reading more classic fantasy. In that case, I, I recommend it. Moving on to trilogies. If you look at any list for beginner's fantasy, you're most likely going to find the Mistborn trilogy. Now, these books I find to be super accessible. The writing is very to the point. It's not flowery at all. It reads like an action heist story, though the pacing does slow a bit in the second book where we have more political intrigue. This is a trilogy in which allomancers, people with the ability to burn metals after ingesting them, gain enhanced senses and control over powerful supernatural forces. The world and magic system are very unique. Sometimes Sanderson reminds you a little too often about the rules of the magic system, but if you're new, this could actually be a benefit. The story involves a crew of Alamancers who are planning a heist to take down the immortal tyrant who split the world into a two-tiered society. I made a Why You Should Read Mistborn video if you want more details, but it is a fantastic story and another great way to be introduced to his Cosmere universe. And when you finish the main trilogy, there's more Mistborn books to read. The Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks. This was actually the very first adult fantasy series that I ever read way back in middle school. I don't really talk about it that often because it's just been a long time since I've read them, but recently Brent Weeks announced that he's returning to Night Angel, so I'm going to be rereading them in preparation for that, but this was once my very favorite series of all time. If you don't know, it follows a young street urchin who ends up being taken in and trained by the most notorious dead assassin Durzo Blint. The boy has to give up his old life and all the people he knew as well as his own name in order to train and become a human weapon and he needs to repress his own emotions but uh, he ends up having a weakness and there's a girl from his childhood that he kind of keeps tabs on. If you enjoy stories about rogues and thieves and assassins then this is definitely a high recommendation. Now another series that helped form my love for fantasy is The Legend of Drist. This is a huge series but it starts with the Dark Elf Trilogy by R.A. Salvatore. Well, it technically started with the Icewind Dale Trilogy, but the prequel, the Dark Elf Trilogy, is the best way to start. Salvatore is basically a legend when it comes to writing some of the best Forgotten Realm books, and Driss Duarden is his greatest character of all time. The Dark Elf Trilogy tells the story of Drist, a drow born into the subterranean Underdark. Drist is raised in an abusive family that's typical of his society, but he finds comfort in his training and friendship with the Weapons Master. The protagonist is basically a selfless force for good that's born into an evil society, and eventually Drist must decide whether to follow his morals or the rules of the corrupt drow. There's some great emotional development and complicated moral dilemmas that make Drist an endearing and compelling character, and the friends he meets along his journey are amazing as well. This is another series that I want to make more videos on. The First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. This is a wonderfully cynical grimdark fantasy that can be very thought-provoking. It twists many familiar fantasy tropes upside down. It's very fast-paced and it doesn't really have any bloat to the writing at all. Abercrombie has some brilliant prose. His writing isn't flowery, it isn't too simple either, it has that perfect balance. And he's pretty much a master at writing action scenes. The First Law books are undeniably character-driven. It feels as if the story exists in order to force the characters through a process of transformation, and these characters you're going to love and hate at the same time. This is a story with no heroes, no villains, just people doing their best. And it's one of my all-time favorite trilogies, and when you're done, there's some standalone novels set in the same world, as well as a second trilogy called The Age of Madness. The Ryeria Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan, starting with the first book, Theft of Swords. I am currently making my way through this series, I'm on book two, and I can already tell that this is, would be a fantastic series to start off with. I am loving the two main protagonists, they're a lot of fun to read. This series has a lot of classic fantasy tropes, but it's modern and it's fast-paced, 
and it's just a lot of fun. If you're into high fantasy adventure and you want a classic sword and sorcery story, then I would recommend the original Dragonlance trilogy, starting with Dragons of Autumn Twilight. It's got everything, magic, romance, betrayal, tons of dragons. It's very beginner friendly and is much faster paced than classics like The Lord of the Rings. It is very tropey though with, you know, elves, dwarves, wizards, that sort of thing. Some people don't like that, some people do. If you end up liking it, there's a near endless amount of books in the same universe following sometimes the same characters or their children or brand new characters. Many of them are good, there's a few misses in there, but you don't need to read them all. Now I'm sure you know by now that I love The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. I've made a ton of theory videos on this series, but it's not a finished trilogy. And I know that some people don't like me recommending unfinished series, but I'm going to do it anyway. These books mean a lot to me, and I've never regretted reading them, despite really wishing the third book was out. I think Kingkiller is great for people new to fantasy because it pretty much just follows the one character, rather than a huge cast. Kvoth is a legendary king killer gone incognito as an innkeeper and is now narrating his life story in first person. First person also seems to work really well with people new to the genre. Not to mention the writing style is just very beautiful and lyrical with intricate details and tons of clues and foreshadowing hidden all throughout which makes rereading it even better. Another trilogy that's in first person is the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. It is a slow burn, there's a lot of political intrigue, not as much much action as some other fantasy series, uh, and the pacing is just overall a little bit slower. But I absolutely love this series, it's kind of a hit or miss with some people, so I would recommend it, but I just don't know if I'd recommend it for beginners. And now let's move on to some longer series. The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. This is a series that a lot of you have recommended to me over the years, and I finally caved in, and I listened to the first audiobook, and then I couldn't stop, and now I really like The Dresden Files, and I'm gonna have to make videos on it, and there's there's so many series I still need to make videos on. These books are very accessible and fast, and I hear that it only gets better and better the further you go into the series. It is urban fantasy at its finest, uh, and I can't wait to read more of it. One of you guys mentioned that it's basically crazy crime noir with fairies, vampires, and werewolves. And I 100% agree, if you like detective crime novels, then this is a great place to start if you want to get into fantasy. If you're looking for a classic farm boy becomes the hero fantasy, The Belgariad is a five book fantasy epic written by David Eddings. While it utilizes a lot of those familiar fantasy tropes that you've seen a lot, uh, Eddings' lack of freshness isn't really enough to stop me from enjoying the warmth of camaraderie between these characters and the brilliant banter of his dialogue. There's a certain coziness to these books that makes it a comfort read, and there's also a sequel series of five books as well and two standalones, so there's plenty more to read after you finish the original series. Now I'm also going to recommend some of the big fantasy series like The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, or A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, because these have time and time again been the gateway fantasies that get people addicted. Both of these are epic fantasy that follow a huge cast of characters in a very intricate and detailed world. And with long series like this, you become really attached to the characters. I would also recommend The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. This is one of my favorite series of all time, however I would recommend reading some of Sanderson's other series before getting into Stormlight. Because when you get to Words of Radiance, there's going to be some Cosmere easter eggs that you might miss out on. So that is my beginner's guide to fantasy. Let me know what you think about these recommendations in the comments. You guys left me a ton, uh, that some of which I didn't get to, so I'm gonna leave some up on the screen right now. Also let me know your recommendations in the comments so that it's easier for other people to find, and also, you know, it helps out the algorithm with this video, so that's always nice as well. If you want to help support the channel, then make sure to check out my Patreon. Also I have a Ko-Fi if you want to do like a one-time tip, that helps out a lot. Otherwise, I just, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.